some vendors coming out of the woodwork with different technologies for campus safety to address that. So he, he being next door to me would come over and start asking questions. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And uh, I was working with my staff to evaluate some of the things. And uh, we had not had a good relationship with the, the police departments, or at least my predecessor had not, uh, to where there was a lot of friction there. But I decided to try and work with the, the chief to uh, uh, figure out which technologies made sense. Uh, my philosophy was that if we didn't support it up front and work with them to select the right technologies, we were going to have to support it after the fact and basically inherit the technology either way. So we decided to get involved actively start bringing in vendors and looking at uh, different things we could do. So uh, during that process, uh, we came across a lot of technologies. Uh, I was literally at a party one night and someone came up to me and says, uh, oh, you're in technology? Well, I have a friend of a friend who's thinking of this mass notification texting system. My boss's cousin decided to get in the business as well. So everyone, you know, we were getting inundated weekly with people calling us with different ideas. But we tried to look at different uh, periodicals. Campus Safety Magazine is a good one for in the uh, college and university sector and some others as well that uh, our chief was getting and try to figure out what made sense and what didn't, what was workable and what didn't. And so as we started looking at uh, uh, some of the laws that were mentioned that we needed to uh, uh, get an instantaneous way to respond to an emergency, we started looking at the different technologies. So just going down the list, certainly text messaging um, for students, uh, it's the way that they communicate. Um, email is something that we use internally with employees, it's very effective, but Texting uh, is the way that uh, anyone basically under 25 communicates nowadays. They rarely use email. When we do email blasts to our students, we get very little response. If you do anything with texting, um, you get immediate responses from students. So we, we definitely needed something that would do that, uh, that would allow us to do a mass text messaging. And I'll talk about the data collection, which is one of the challenges with these systems. Uh, voice messages, we found that uh, with employees, we need to be able to send voice messages. The 160 character limit of a text message we found to be uh, a challenge because you have a header and you've got a subject line and by the time you're done you've got like two lines of message and trying to get information out there uh, was, was a bit of a challenge so in the tests we did with our employees we found that uh, employees were more receptive to voice messages where you, they could get more information and details uh, whereas students they're just going to let it roll to voicemail and not even respond to it probably. Uh, in terms of email most of our employees uh, those that are not in the classroom but when they're in their offices uh, they're at their desk during a computer anyway. When you send them an email, they almost always instantaneously see the message and can respond. So email we feel, feels very effective for employees. As I mentioned, not so for uh, students. Um, uh, instant messaging, uh, we don't use that much, but uh, some of the systems that are out there allow you to do mass instant messaging if you have instant messaging addresses from uh, your, your uh, employees or students. Uh, paging, which is kind of going the way of uh, the dinosaur. There are still people out there carrying pagers, and we have our law enforcement carry pagers as an alternate mode of communication where we can send them messages. Some of our alert systems on campus send them both text messages or cell phone and pages just in case uh, different carriers have different levels of coverage depending on where they are in a building or where they are on campus. Uh, multimodal are uh, services that provide multiple ways of communicating. There are some that just do text messages, and those are the ones that came out of the woodwork after Virginia Tech, but there are some services that provide a few or even all of these services under one package. They are more expensive, but they are available to where you can choose your method of communicating. Um, one of the challenges in higher ed is that uh, you know students are very adept with one thumb and not even looking at their phone. They can send messages. And during quizzes and tests, it's easy to send answers back and forth. So many instructors have their students turn their phones off when they get into class, especially if there's an exam going on. So sending text messages to people whose phones are off obviously doesn't do a lot of good. And we found our instructors uh, the same. They keep their phones off during the class as well. So. Uh, now we're looking at, uh, we've been researching and we're in the process working with a consultant of putting a large scale speaker systems on our campuses so that when the people hear the siren or the, uh, the, the broadcast message, they'll know to turn their phones on to know that there's an event going on. And via the text messaging, we'll be able to communicate them in more detail. This, the large scale speaker systems have some challenges in terms of audio quality and, um, you know, spread out over our, our campuses are each over 100 acres and they're very large. Uh, facilities and with lots of buildings. And so sending out a message over speakers, it's like being in a stadium, the further you get away, you get echoes, you get, uh, uh, the, um, I'm not sure what the correct term is, but the signal gets dispersed and uh, depending on where you are, you may be able to understand the voice, you may not. Uh, we looked at other speaker systems as well. We looked at doing stuff in the classroom. One of our campuses has phones in the classroom, but we found that um, we had a big problem with vandalism. You put these nice phones in a classroom and you, with speakers and you communicate messages to your faculty. Or, or to even to the students, and then the phones would disappear after a few days. 
Uh, the theft rate went down. We put big signs on the phones because they're all digital handsets that said these will not work at your house. They're not a standard phone. And, and so the theft rate went down. But we also found we had a lot of vandalism. Students would just, the classroom's empty. They go and they trash the phone for whatever reason. And so we didn't feel that was very effective. We, we, it seems like the, the rate at the one campus is about 30 to 40 percent of the phones are out of commission at any given time. So that wasn't a very effective thing. There's a lot of technologies now. There's IP-based uh, speakers. So if, uh, on a college or university campus, every building is pretty much going to be connected to the network backbone with internet access. But and in, in most cases, most facilities now, in a, a, a campus like this, was have wireless access as well. Um, but and their devices now, we can do IP-based speaker phones. We, we looked at intercoms, and it felt like old technology that you know you grew up with in the K-12 system. And so we, we've continued looking at that because it's very uh, low tech but very reliable. And the high tech, higher tech things that rely on a uh, plugging into your network. Uh, there's some challenges there that we're, we're looking at that um, where uh, your network in a short-term uh, situation, just say some situation in campus where maybe for over a couple hours, if your network devices are being powered, um, for example, video surveillance cameras, wireless access points, and some of the other devices that are out there, they use a technology called power over ethernet, which means they're getting their power off the network device. Those network devices typically are on battery backup that may last a couple hours. So if you have a long-term situation, like the big one hits in California, and you're relying on these technologies in your classroom, once the power is gone, unless your building has generators or some sort of backup facility, that technology is gone. So in some cases, we found that the, going the low-tech route is probably going to be more effective in emergency than the higher-tech things. So we've opted to look at a large-scale speaker system just to make a loud noise to get out to our students and faculty and staff so that they know when they hear that alert, turn on your phone or look at your email and um, you'll be able to see what's going on in more detail. Uh, websites and portals, we found uh, communicating with the public, it's a very effective way to get information out there. People start calling in if you have a situation. We had, right before we went live with our uh, mass communication system, um, we had a student about a month before go live, bring a gun on campus, start flashing it around. And literally within 10 minutes, uh, the disinformation started spreading. One girl saw the guy with the, the gun. She texted five of her friends who texted 10 of their friends. Before you knew it, everyone on, every student on campus pretty much knew what was going on.